Hi guys, it's Eko here once again and uh, in this video we are going to take a look at uh, the final game of the Women World Chess Championship 2018 between uh, Juven Jun and Wagno Katerina. So uh, if you may recall, uh, this was the final round of the 6th round knockout elimination tournament held in Hanty Masinsk in Russia and uh, Juven Jun and Wagno Katerina were the finalists obviously and uh, first they played a four game classical match in which uh, Wagner won game two in brilliant fashion in it was a technical brilliancy then uh, when Jun missed serious winning chances in game three and then in a must win situation in game four uh, she played the brilliant Sicilian uh, or more precisely Wagner uh, played pretty badly under pressure and lost so then they played two uh, rapid games. I think it was 25 minutes plus, I'm not sure how many seconds. I should have maybe checked that, but never mind. And these games ended in a draw. And then they uh, played another two games. And the time control was 10 minutes and 10 seconds. So game 6.7 was won by Wenjun. Uh, but it was really more precise. More precisely said, it was lost by Wagner because uh, she had like an equal position. And then she suddenly gave up a pawn, and then she got uh, outplayed in technical end game, which was really surprising. And so this was uh, the final game in which now Wagner was in a must-win situation with the black pieces, whereas uh, a draw was sufficient for Wenjun to become uh, the world champion. So let's see how the game went. Zhu opened with d4 and Wagno played d6 hinting at a oh, variety of openings but already here she indicated she wants to play something that is not mainstream opening theory. Uh, knight f3 by Wenjun, g6, this is the modern defense uh, which I you, like to play but it is definitely a risky choice although probably suitable in a must-win situation. e4, bishop, bishop g7, and now bishop c4. So there are many possible lines, obviously, here, and this is one respectable try. And now e6. Uh, so with this move, black uh, tries to elect the so-called hippopotamus, which is characterized by, let's say, after c3, a6, b6. I'll just make some random moves. So this is the hippopotamus with all these pawns on 6th rank and these bishops and these knights on uh, on the 7th rank or the 2nd rank. <coughs> Sorry about that. So yeah, this is obviously quite risky because uh, uh, <coughs> black could see a lot of space but actually it is it has some potential especially on lower levels. Although for instance, especially in a Blitz game it is often played by Nakamura and you know, yeah, he, he scored some victories with it. And uh, apart from e6, uh, knight f6 is a possible try. And then after queen e2, we have like a lot of theory connected with immediate advance of e5 or delayed advance of the e5. So uh, here uh, the hippopotamus has some sense because usually uh, c4 advance or e4 advance are dangerous for black, but here none of them is possible. But on the other hand, the, uh, white hasn't played a4 yet and he doesn't have a knight on c3, so it's debatable. But it's definitely playable and it was played by many players. Okay, so castling by uh, Wenjun, knight e7, and now a4, which is uh, quite logical. This is uh, meant to play against both b6 or a6. Uh, Rook e1 was played by some strong players, so let's say Vladimir Kramnik, but okay, a4 also has some logic. And here, let's say, if black plays a6, you get a5, and this is favorable for white. Also, if you get b6, then uh, a6 is, a5 is favorable, because you don't have time for a6 and b5. And this is where probably the drawbacks of this particular setup of hippopotamus are revealed. But on the other hand, black could have played something with d5, and now the drawback of this bishop on c4 is, in, uh, is revealed, because now it gets hit by this advance. But after takes, takes, and bishop d3, well, the pawn structure is symmetrical, there is only one open file, and it is very hard to play for a win here with the black pieces, and this was especially something Wagner was trying to avoid. So, castling by black, c3, 97, and now a5. This is probably premature when black hasn't advanced his pawns on the queen side, but okay. 
Now rook b8, this is a bit strange move, which objectively can be good. Once again, d5 was probably the best move in the position, but what's a, yeah, good luck with that. Although, to be honest, a5 has a concrete idea in mind, because after let's say rook e1, you can play d5, and if takes, you play knight b6. This is a typical idea, and you want to take on d5 with the knight. But it's not clear whether white should be afraid of that. Also, you can just remove the bishop here, and you're probably you're probably better. So, okay. A5, rook b8 was played, queen e2, b6, this also justifies white's plan with a5, and black is probably worse here, but once again, this was a blitz game, and yeah, it's, we, sh we shouldn't be too harshly criticizing the choices under such a time control, and when we consider black had to win. A takes b6, a takes b6, now, you know, white has this a file, which is in his favor, bishop b4, continuing development, bishop b7, knight bd2, h6, and now h4, this is potentially a measure against g5, or also it creates some ideas of h5 in the future, knight f6, and here uh, knight bishop g3 was played, probably more precise was bishop a6, trying to exchange the bishops, uh, every exchange is in white's favor, especially this uh, white square bishop is good bishop, and you avoid d5 ideas, because if, uh, let's say, some exchange, and d5 you get in e5, and this is probably good for you. So bishop g3, d5, and now black doesn't have to take with the pawn, he can take with the knight, and this is in his favor. But objectively, he is close to equalizing here, but not better. He takes d5, knight f d5, and now bishop e5, this is annoying, exchanging this, this important bishop. And this bishop was doing nothing on g3, more or less. Knight f5, bishop g7, king g7, g3, uh, defending the h4 pawn. Knight f6, bishop a6, trying to exchange this bishop once again. Bishop a8, now bishop d3, it is a bit probably too passive here. Uh, queen d5 is probably a better move, uh, pinning this knight. And... Yeah, you, ha you have to play actively. I think it's better than just playing for a draw, because let's say after king g8, bishop d3, c5, this is the thematic idea of, uh, of in this position, you can even play h5. And if black takes with the knight, you have g4 and you win the piece. So yeah, you, you soften this shelter a bit. He can probably play g5, and then you're threatening to take here. So it's actually not so clear what... Uh, what Black is doing here, and he probably can go c5 in the first place, he has to go back with the knight or something. So yeah, this was better, but after bishop d3, knight d6 was a mistake, uh, c5 was unpleasant, and let's say after d takes c5, b takes c5, knight c4, you get knight d6, and suddenly your pieces are quite lively here, and okay, it's still probably close to equal, but you have some chances. Uh, it's and if uh, white plays queen d5, then you can get queen d5, and this endgame will be, once again, good for you, because you will put another rook here, you will have these two files, and white will be on the defensive. So that was a bit more better, but okay, now it's 96, rook fd1, now c5, uh, now c5 is not good, because white can play exactly queen e 5 and you don't have this queen d5 resource, and... You're a bit stuck here with black pieces now. So knight d7 trying to prepare c5, and here knight e4 seeking further exchanges. Objectively, b4 is the best because you prevent c5. Because if he plays c5, takes, 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 knight takes, you have this check, queen e5, and you are. Uh, it's a double attack. You, you attack this knight and you win the knight on c5. So black can play c5, but okay, once again we have to remember this was, uh, the draw was sufficient for Venjan, so she uh, took the opportunity to exchange pieces. Knight e5, once again, this is a bit risky, it's probably better to exchange pieces, but yeah, once again, competitive situation forced uh, Wagner to play a bit uh, riskily. Knight e d2, and now g5, this is objectively not good, because it weakens this pawn, but still h takes g5, h takes g5, bishop e4, now getting this exchange done, now queen f6, this is kinda suspicious, although it has a concrete idea in mind, bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes, rook takes, and now king g2 was played by Mejun, and it, first it looks silly, why don't you play knight e4, 
But now Arn after queen h6 and you take this pawn on g5, you get rook h8. And <coughs> here it is very hard to judge in a blitz game that this is actually quite okay for white because the next move he plays rook g1 and ev evacuates the king. And this this uh, infiltration squares are covered. This is covered by the rook, this is covered by the knight, and this is covered by the knight. And also if you f6 then you have this check and you can get uh, your knight back to to f4 if nothing else and you're completely fine here. But yeah, it's it's a blitz game, you're, you know, the tension is big and you really don't want to risk such things. So from the practical point of view, Venjan's choice is quite understandable. Rook h8 and now rook h1, once again she could have taken on g5 which would lead into the same positions. And after rook takes, king takes, knight d6, now this is more or less completely equal. But after knight e5, queen h6, king g2, knight f6, knight df3, knight fe4, there is still a long game where in which everything is possible. And it's... <laughs> So, uh, knight h2 was played by Wen Jun, and here, you know, both players were not that dramatically low on time. I think Wagner had some two and a half minutes, and Wen Jun had three minutes. But here, in this position, <laughs> Wagner played probably one of the worst moves in her career. She played queen g6, and of course, <laughs> Wen Jun simply took it, and this was over. So, yeah, this is, I mean, <laughs> this was. Uh, like typical of the whole match because uh, th th this was not the competition in chess. I mean, it was a competition in chess, but it was more a competition in in uh, in nerves. And here, when June proved her nerves are actually stronger than Wagner's, and she deserved the victory, and uh, she captured the title of the women world champion with this game. But okay, I think uh, Wagner shouldn't be too, too... I mean, okay, obviously, uh, considering how close she was, this will leave a very unpleasant aftertaste, but she, I think she uh, she gave a birth... She, she, okay, how is it called in English? She gave a birth to a son a month and a half ago, and uh, I think she didn't play competitive for a while, obviously, and okay, with... With all regard, it, it still is a very, very decent result, I mean, to be in the final and to play a game. Okay, sometimes you need a bit of luck to succeed, but still, she she can be satisfied overall. <sighs> so yeah, that's, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to watch the analysis to games uh, 2 and 4 of the classical part of the match, uh, you can find them on the left-hand side of the screen. And that's all. You can also watch the Carlson Caruana game analysis and read our blog. And if you like the content, you can subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching once again and see you soon. Goodbye.